Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, Philly 500 is proud to let you know that Howie Roseman might have just found his next target, and it's a safety that would fit perfectly in with the Eagles. Dallas still stinks. King thing back here. I hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. So I'm going to tell you a little Philly story or what could be a Philly story. Once upon a time, there was this beautiful franchise and they were called the Philadelphia Eagles. And this Philadelphia Eagles team, they signed an undrafted rookie free agent in 2018 named Ryan Neal. Now, Ryan Neal came into Philly, and he was cut later in camp, never got to play for the Eagles, went on to play with Atlanta, then went on to play in Seattle, where he had a decent career, and it looked like he was going to get a little bit of a payday, and then Seattle said to let him go. But there was this guy. He had a Napoleon hat on. He had a pocket pencil protector and glasses, and he said, you know what? Ryan Neal has... He has gotten better. He's done more than we ever thought he could do. Maybe, just maybe, we'll bring him back. Now, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored, most throttled Eagles content creator in all of the internet. And if you've been subscribed for a while, I just want to thank you guys for all the support you give to me. It truly, truly uh, means a lot. Now, if you guys uh, are interested or if you haven't yet and you would like a Draft 5 hat, we have them going on pre-orders right now. They they have been moving really, really well. We've even sold a couple shirts. So uh, for those of you guys, because I've had a lot of people asking me about them, uh, the Draft 5 hats for the draft, for the Philly Shakedown podcast, when we stream the draft live, we are going to be coming together and we are going to will Bajan Robinson to the Philadelphia Eagles. And if you want to support that, uh, then definitely click the link in the description and go get yourself a Draft 5 hat. Um, and for those of you guys that have bought it already, thank you so much. I'm hearing a lot of you guys have, and uh, I really, really appreciate it. Now, make sure when you get it, you know, you send us pictures and stuff like that because uh, we are going to definitely post those. All right, so I want to get into this because Ryan Neal, who was supposed to be a restricted, restricted free agent by the Seattle Seahawks, basically had his restriction removed. They had tendered him, which was like, one of the lowest tenders, but they tendered him, and they today they removed it, making him a free agent. Now, he is very appealing for a couple reasons. The first reason is the Eagles could use another safety, especially where he was strong, and that is in pass coverage, okay? So, let, let's, let's take a look at this first thing, all right? So, Thomas R. Peterson, gotta love the guy, shout out to him. He says, Seahawks waived the tender on safety Ryan Neal, making him eligible to sign with any team with any team he was third highest safety in 2023 by PFF primarily by his coverage ability played under Sean Desai last year which is another piece to this puzzle pound eagles all right so that's a very very good thing then we got Brandon Deeg he says this the Seahawks have pulled the restricted free agent tender on safety Ryan Neal. He is now a free agent. He screams Howie Roseman signing, only 27 years old, and played really well last season in 10 starts. He had an interception, eight, pa eight passes defended, and 66 tackles. So he did. He had a really, really good year last year. Uh, he's actually played fairly well for the Seahawks the last few years. Uh, what many people don't know is he was actually an undrafted rookie free agent signed 
by the Eagles, and then he didn't make the team. He was cut, uh, went on to Atlanta for a year, and then he's been with Seattle the last few years, but he's slowly gotten better and better. Now, I'm not saying he's an all-pro safety or he's he's going to come in and solve all our problems, but he's been getting better and better each year. He's six foot three, 200 pounds, and he's very good in pass coverage, and I think this is a great fit for the Philadelphia Eagles. One, they're not going to have to pay him a lot of money, okay? That's the first thing. He ain't going to cost you uh, an arm and a leg to sign him. Secondly, Terrell Edmonds, uh, the safety they signed from Pittsburgh, is he's a bigger safety, right? He's 215 pounds. He's a physical safety. He's more of a good tackler, uh, but I don't think he's as good as this kid is in coverage. So if you were to bring uh, Ryan Neal in, you would get a guy who I think would go perfectly and complement Terrell Edmonds, Terrell Edmonds perfectly. All right, and Sean Desai knows him. This has all the makings of something to watch. Now I'm not saying the Eagles are going to get him. I'm not saying it's happening, but I'm saying this has all the makings. This has all the ingredients you need for Howie Roseman to go out and take a chance and bring this kid in for the year. And if you remember, free agency has been all about the defense for the most part. So why not add another safety? They still could use another safety. And, and you know, if you did bring him in and pay him, it'd probably be a one-year deal. And I don't think it would deter you from going safety in the draft if that's where you choose to go. So this, this could be a very good sneaky signing. And the kid has played fairly well over the last few years. Not just last year, but uh, the last few years. Uh, Jamal Adams got hurt. Uh, well, a few years ago, a couple, not last year, but the year before, right? And he filled in for him and was and played really good. So this kid is somebody who may be the perfect fit for the Eagles because of what you're going to pay him, the fact that he knows Sean Desai, and I think he would be a good compliment to Terrell Edmonds. So something to keep your eye out on. I think this makes a lot of sense for the Eagles. We'll see if Howie Roseman uh, is going to do it. And you're probably saying, well, okay, that's fine. We could sign him, but how much money do we have in cap space, Philly? That's the big question. And and he, some cap space stuff came in, out today, right? A lot of people are talking about teams' cap spaces. Here are the top 10 teams in the NFL cap space. The Bears with $38.2 million. Maybe they could sign a few more linebackers. Panthers, $27.4 million. Lions, 22.9 million, uh, Cardinals 22.3 million, Packers 21.8 million, Falcons 20 21.5, and then you have the Eagles sitting at 21.3 million dollars in cap space. All right, so you have more than enough money to sign this kid if if you want to. The Eagles have more than enough money to go into the draft or or decide there's a player uh, that they want. And sign him. Even at, at Kevin Bayard at, in this situation, they would have the money for it. And I still think a move like this would not negate the possibility that you could land a Kevin Bayard if he was to get uh, cut by the Tennessee Titans. This shouldn't do any of that, but it should give you a security blanket. Somebody that can come in, has game experience, will play, and is pretty good in pass coverage. I think he would be a good compliment to Edmonds. Now, if something happens and you can get a Kevin Bayard or something like that, then, then he becomes a depth piece, and all of a sudden, you're very deep at the safety position. So it's going to be very interesting. Keep your eye out on this kid, Ryan Neal, because it would make a ton of sense by the Eagles, and it would be a very good signing by Howie Roseman. This is this is a, right up Howie Roseman's wheelhouse. Let's just face it, okay? The other thing uh, I want to talk to you guys about again uh, today is Jalen Carter. Now, yesterday I talked about Jalen Carter, and the Raiders apparently took him off the draft board. Well, guess what? It looks like the Detroit Lions might have taken him off the draft board too. Uh, I heard something about even possibly the Cardinals took him off their draft board. So you have to really wonder how many teams have taken Jalen Carter off the draft board. If he falls to 10, I think you got to pull the trigger. Now, sorry, I need a drink real quick. I need a drink. Pinky up when you drink. It shows you got class. All right, so... So, Jalen Carter, if these teams are all taking him off the draft board, he very well could fall to 10. He very well could. And the Eagles have an advantage here. And I think it's Jordan Davis 
N'Kobe Dean because those two guys played with him in college. They know him. And the Eagles may feel like having those guys helping and as a security blanket, somebody for him to talk to, lean on, I think that may push the Eagles to draft Jalen Carter. But I really don't know. I don't know how many teams have actually taken him off the draft board. And what if it's all complete smokescreen? What if there are teams like the Lions uh, and the Raiders that haven't taken him off the Although I think the Raiders probably have because uh, of, of everything that happened with, uh, uh, with what's his face? Um, so, you know, with Henry Ruggs. So, um, they're probably really did, but I don't know about the other teams. It could be all smokescreen. Who knows? But I think if Jalen Carter falls a 10, I think you strongly have to consider it. And I'm beginning to wonder, would the Eagles pass up on him too? Is this not just one or two team thing? Is this like all the teams down there are going to pass up on him? Is he going to be falling into the, like the 20s or something like that? I, it's hard for me to imagine, but you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, but if, if, if the Eagles can do their due diligence, do their homework on this kid. And if he falls a 10, you got to you got to just take him. You've got to do what you got to do. Uh there's no question about it. But you have to make sure that his head is in the right place. I wonder if the Jalen Carter coming in heavy and everything he was going through at his pro day really like really bothered teams. Uh you know, they were already disturbed about everything that happened when he was at the combine and getting arrested and having to leave the combine they were already bothered by that but then to see him come in and be so ill prepared for the for the uh for the scouting for the pro day the uh pro day for the uh for the bulldogs um that may have screwed him up teams might have been like nah nah we can't deal with this guy he, he may be a head case that's what teams may be thinking i'm just saying i don't know uh, but we're trying to figure it out. But it's looking like more teams are reportedly have him off the draft board. And I, I personally got to say this. Why, why if you're a team, if you're the Raiders or if you're the Lions or if you're the Eagles or if you're the Bears, oh my. Why would you let everybody know you took somebody off your draft board? I think that's stupid. That's the one reason why I think it could all be fake. And maybe teams are just putting that out there. You know, maybe one team, the Raiders, did it. And now everybody else is trying to leak that out too. Uh, because, you know, they think it's an advantage. Because why would you tell other teams, you know, why would you give your strategy? That's like two boxers, right? You're boxing, right? You're boxing. It's the white Mike Tyson meat. It's ludicrous, okay? My my defense is impregnable. My style is impetuous, all right? So white Mike Tyson is, is you fight white Mike Tyson. And, and white Mike Tyson says, I'm about to throw a right hand. And they throw his right hand. I'm about to throw a left hand. They throw a left hand. I'm about to, to slip you, slip in a jab. Here comes the uppercut. You know what I mean? It's like, like you're going to tell what you're going to do before you do it. That's stupid. So why would NFL teams do that? I'm just saying. I'm just wondering. What do I know? What do I know? I'm only living in Howie Vision. You know what I'm saying? But Jalen Carter, he is very interesting. The whole situation with him is interesting and how that's going to fall or affect um, you know, his draft status with everything that happened, it, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be high drama on draft night. You know what I mean? As far as the Eagles go, Ryan Neal, I think he could be a perfect guy for the Eagles to bring in as, as another piece to the safety puzzle. Uh, I do. And, and to me, like I said, he, he, he's been good with Seattle. He's not like top five safety, top 10. He's a guy who I think could be a great bridge safety. He's a kid that is 27 years old, 6'3", 200 pounds. Great pass coverage, getting better each year. Um, but, you know, you probably bring him in for a year or something. And you probably get him cheap. And he doesn't really, he's not really going to affect any big possible move of a Kevin Bayard or somebody like that coming. So keep your eye out for that to happen. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a thing bad. Remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. So just in case you guys were wondering, like, what would a Ryan Neal, what would if he had made if he would have signed uh, the tag that the Seattle Seahawks placed on him? Um, it says here that Neal had been tendered uh, at the lowest level, which would have set him to make $2.6 million if he would have signed his tender before it was revoked. So, so... 
they they, they would have paid him two point six million dollars. You probably could bring him in. I'm thinking three year deal. And you know, I say one year deal, but this guy he got a lot of Pro Bowl votes, so he he could be a guy. Maybe you bring in for three years. I stand corrected. Maybe you know, I was thinking one year. I'm thinking two to three years now. Maybe you know, three million dollars a year. So three years, nine million dollars, something like that. It's possible, and it could be. The perfect situation because then you can really focus uh, on getting a safety in the draft. And uh, I like it. I like it. I think the Eagles should definitely pursue him. With that said, Denzel Washington out.